And now I will make you the host. Okay, thank you. Sure. Good morning, everyone. While Angela makes me the host, um, I want to officially start the meeting since we have a quorum. This is Thursday, and we are the elementary school building committee on meeting on Thursday, November 18th, just as I check the calendar. Um, I want to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard because we're conducting this by Zoom as per the governor's order. So I will go across what I see on my screen and just ask you to indicate whether um, you can hear and be heard. Allison? Yes, this is Allison. Sean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Rupert? Yes, I'm here. Great. Phoebe? Hi, here. Steve? I'm here. Jonathan? Here. Tamara? Yes. Um, hi, Julio Fernandez, um, Interim Assistant Principal here at the Fort. Um, I'll be covering Tamara for the beginning of the meeting. Okay, fine. So we'll welcome her when she joins us. Ben? Yep, here. And Paul. Present. Okay, so uh, Paul is on the phone, just so people know. And uh, Allison has told me that she only has a half hour this morning, so she will be leaving early. I want to, uh, as everyone can see, Margaret Wood from Answer, our OPM, has joined us. So I am officially starting the meeting. Uh, as all of you know, and we sent out an email and a press release will go out shortly. Mike, Ben and I participated on the MSBA panel on Tuesday. It seems like a long time ago right now, but, <laughs> and it was an, a very intense for me anyway, um, meeting because the three firms that were the finalists were all excellent um, and they were different from each other. So it wasn't a, you know, ab above all. And they all have a lot of experience that we were looking for. We ended up by a very narrow margin choosing Danisco. Um, and um, I'll let either Ben or Mike speak to it, but I think all of us were, were impressed by the range of their experience that was relevant to us and the way they started out talking about the educational program in kids. Um, one other thing I might say is I uh, went out on my own to try to get into a few of the schools, one school each for, that, that each of the designers had built. And again, they were great, sc terrific schools, um, very impressive, including the, the two that did not get chosen as finalists. So I think we will be well served by the firm we have. Steve was able to come with me to the one from Donesco. Um, so Mike or Ben, do either of you um, wanna add to that? Yeah, I'll, I'll add briefly. Um, I second everything that Kathy said. It was a really hard choice. Kathy and I checked in yesterday and Ben and I did separately and a lot of lost sleep. It was really hard, um, you know, and, and I think what Denisco in my notes stood out is they were really clear on communication. They had a long track record of building, um, con doing consolidations, doing net zero schools, actually one net positive school, which I'd heard that term before. So that was good learning for me. Um, I thought their team, you know, was a team uh, that you felt like could work there. I think there was the right number of people on the call. Um, and, uh, you know, I think all of them felt excited about it. It was really hard. You know, I, I, yeah, I think what I've said this in public meetings, so it's no surprise. I, you know, I really struggled. I thought JCJ did a nice job. I think they made a couple of tactical errors, um, but I thought their green consultant was particularly good. And, and I also thought, um, you know, Lamaro Pagano had a really inventive way of communicating. So they were all really strong. Uh, any of them, I think, could be could have been successful with the project. But I, I do think we went with the best one. I think it is worth noting that Kathy, Ben, and I happened to have the same ratings. We weren't able to communicate, obviously, during the meeting, but uh, but we ended up with the same ratings for the top three. So that made me sleep a little better last night once I calmed down and thought about it a little more. That that at least uh, the three representatives that um, from this body. Uh, you know, 
didn't see everything the same. Certainly we didn't rank the shortlist the same, but in the end we, we came up with the same rankings, but I'll, I'll defer to Ben if he has other things he would like to add. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely definitely agree with uh, Mike and Kathy there. The, um, I think Donesco had probably like the strongest presentation. Like they, they kind of exuded confidence, but not only that, confidence and competence that was the other thing, but yeah. I, I just, the, the student-centric approach that they had and like, their emphasis on communication, like that, that kind of drove it home. But yeah, it was really all shades of gray. You know, and I was, um, the school and I, Steve can speak to this, but the school Steve and I visited, we, the, we were guided by the facilities director for all of Springfield, but he'd been on the building committee for the school. And Steve, Steve, you can speak for yourself, but his enthusiasm was also uh, comforting uh, about the building that they got. So, so um, I, you know, I obviously was on the selection committee and Kathy was nice enough to invite me to this visit to the um, Brightwood Lincoln School in the north end of Springfield. And um, I do have to make a comment that, you know, the, the, the guy who was the head of the Division of Capital Asset Management from Springfield showed us around and I thought the tour was going to go on all day. And you don't often see people in these positions, you know, these um, basically the town city architect so enthusiastic about working with an architect. So the fact that the building is built and operating and this, this person was so remains so enthusiastic because they've seen all the sausage being made and they've seen, um, and they have to deal with the things. I mean, there were still people in there fixing the uh, lighting or alarm system, but just absolutely exuded enthusiasm for the disco team that had designed that project. So, um, I, Margaret, I think you said that they were going to try to, um, Donna and Tim, two of the people were going to try to drop in to say hello. Um, let me just see if they're out in the attendees. Tim, Tim is in the attendees, Kathy. Tim is in the attendees. Um, I could bring Tim in and wait, or I could wait until Donna joins us. Um, what do you think, Margaret? Uh, why, don't we, why don't we bring Tim in briefly? Um, just because I think we should move on to the other things on the, well, I don't know, Kathy, we, we can actually continue with the rest of the agenda and they can listen in. And Tim, um, I will send you my uh, cell phone and maybe you can let me know when. I think I brought Tim in. So why don't we oh, just. Oh, you brought Tim in. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, Tim, um, I brought you in. And so if you unmute, you can talk. I just, Allison has to leave early. So I thought yeah. it would be good um, to at least introduce ourselves. You've met three of us um, and you could introduce yourself to the rest of, this is the building committee that's meeting this morning. Um, so why don't I just start with you, Tim, and your role, uh, your role on the project and who you are. Sure, uh, Tim Cooper, very happy to be here, very happy to meet you all. I will be the project manager for Denisco. Uh, I'm pretty sure Donna will be joining us shortly and she'll want to say hi. And uh, But um, I just heard you talking about Pete Garvey. Uh, it's the last project I was on and I'm happy to hear, um, you know, we have a pretty good relationship with Springfield. We've done multiple projects and we're in the process of a third with them. So, um, we like to think we gave them what we want, what they want, uh, and they, uh, you know, they're good to us. So, um, okay, and I did, and Donna has joined us. So, Donna, why don't you introduce yeah. yourself, and then I'll have each member of the panelists introduce introduce themselves. Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, Donna Deniska. Super, super excited to be here this morning. Um, we're we're ready, and really look forward to making. The Fort River School project, just so amazing. So as everyone knows, we, we've got the one more step of negotiating the contract, but we'll be inviting Denisco back um, and we may try to arrange it with a school committee if that's possible, just to introduce you more generally and have you talk. So I think I'll turn around and just um, have, I'll call out names and each person can introduce themselves to you. Sean? Hi, I'm Sean Mangano. I'm the finance director for the town of Amherst. Nice to meet you. And you've met me and Mike, you've met, but he can say hello again, Rupert. 
Hi, I'm Rupert Roy Clark. Uh, I am the facilities director for the ah. schools. Nice to meet you. We'll be talking to you lots. <laughs> Phoebe. Hi, I'm Phoebe Merriam. Um, I'm a Amherst parent, um, and I actually went through the school system here. So this is interesting for me. <laughs> Hopefully exciting too, right? Steve. I'm Steve Schreiber. I'm I'm on the committee by virtue of being a town councilor. I'm I'm actually vice chair of the committee. I will only be on the committee till January because I did not run for re-election. But um, I will stay involved as a member of the public. Um, I'm also the chair of the Department of Architecture at UMass. Oh, wonderful. Um, Kathy, if I could in interrupt for a sec, I think Rick Rice was also trying to join. He's maybe a, uh, a yeah, just a public. Okay, there he is. Awesome, thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, Jonathan. Myself, there we go. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jonathan Salvan. I'm a, a parent of uh, two Fort River students, and I am a local architect as well. Awesome. And Ben, you met. So Ben, you could again introduce yourself just in case with the mask on, you're not the same. Ben. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't see him. <laughs> yep, I'm, uh, I'm still Ben, still the school committee representative. And also I'm Rupert's lackey or slash assistant <laughs> facilities director. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Margaret, you know Allison? Hi, I'm Allison Estes, the assistant principal at Wildwood Elementary, the sister school of Fort River. And the next person is not actually who the person will be, but he, he's, he's under the Tamara. So why don't you um, tell people who Tamara is as well as who you are? <laughs> Good morning. My name is Tamara Sullivan Daly, is uh, our interim principal, and my name is Julio Fernandez. I'm serving as interim assistant principal here at Fort River. I'm also an Amherst parent and an Amherst wrestler, so this is very important to me. Okay, and Paul. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Bachman. I am the town manager. Nice to meet you. Okay, and we have one more person from Danisco. Um, so why don't you quickly introduce yourself and then I think we'll thank you all for coming and I'll put you back in the audience. Um, you're, you're welcome to stay. We're gonna move on to talk about the web page, the website for the project that's, that's been designed. So Richard Rice, if you, you need to just turn your mic yeah. off so you can speak Hi. and introduce yourself. Hi, Rick Rice. Uh, very happy to be working with you as PIC on the project. Great to get started. Well, I want, yes, Mike. Before our, uh, our guests uh, depart, uh, at least this part of the meeting, you know, and the agenda it said next steps, and I know it was referenced earlier, but I think Ben and I had some thoughts to bring from the school committee on this topic. So uh, Ben, if I get them wrong, as always, please correct me. Um, but I think there were two requests from the school committee. One is related to the website, which we'll get into after, but uh, the request was to see if uh, perhaps Margaret uh, and the Danisco team, as well as perhaps the full school building committee might be interested in having uh, a joint meeting at the normally scheduled meeting of the next Amherst school committee, which is the evening of the 14th. Um, I'm gonna double check that I'm right on the 14th. If that's a Tuesday, then I'm right. Uh, yeah, I am right. Um, so, you know, I think they're interested uh, in meeting this group, which we sort of had initially set up, and then we waited for the kind of full team to be developed, and then um, it got delayed a little bit. And so I think there is some desire from the school committee's perspective to do some level of virtual meet and greet uh, and maybe talk about what their responsibilities are and the school building committee's responsibilities now that things are sort of headed in, in a direction. So Ben, did I capture that accurately in terms of the conversation? Yep, spot on. Okay. So yeah, we would know. be delighted. Yeah, we'll, we, we would be delighted, Mike. And, and those start at 6 p.m., correct, Mike? They, or is they start at 6.30. I imagine if it were better for the group, um, they'd be flexible about starting at 6. Um, okay, no, I just, I got yeah. the time wrong, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know the availability of, of, of Margaret and her team and, and Danisco, as well as the group. I mean, if this body doesn't have a quorum, we could still do the meeting, but uh, I think they were wanting to just um, open it up so that we can start. So now that we have 
our team together, we could start some initial conversations about timeline and, and they really want to get some feedback on the ed plan and what their responsibilities are and making sure that they understand what is theirs, what's the school building committees so that we can work in unison, which I thought was lovely. It's awesome. And uh, we're available. Uh, we're so used to evening meetings. So you don't, don't, don't adjust it for us. If, if we don't get on till eight or nine, we're used to it. So, um, and if it's virtual, it makes it even that much easier. Right. But, but even still, we would still be there in person. This is kind of what we do. Right. So we'll work with Margaret and you all to develop maybe a short presentation or whatever you feel is appropriate. But um, I just like to say, Kathy, you have such a talented group of people here between facilities, architects, um, and, and of course, educators that uh, we, we just feel this is a dynamic team to really get involved with. So we, we're really excited. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all for, for joining us this morning. So I, I think I will put you back in the public. Um, Margaret. Unmute. Sorry about that. Um, Donna, Rick, and Tim, can I ask a favor? Um, can you send me a PDF of your interview presentation? Um, we're, we are going to post it. If you can see our interview presentation on the website, uh, if you want to take a look. Um, but we, um, it's very important to this community, as as was discussed in the um, school in the MSBA um, interview, that there we provide maximum transparency in this community. There are a lot of very plugged in connected folks. So if you would send that along, then we'll get it up. And if you want to stick around, I'd be interested in your comments on the uh, website, um, which um, our staff has put together and is just about ready to sort of get launched. So this sure. is a web page for the project. Yep, um, that would be great. And unfortunately, there's no narrative to go along with our That's interview. That's right. But um, ours, ours either. <laughs> yeah, but what, what I'll try to do um, is try to give you maybe a PDF with uh, the videos that we showed. Yeah. Otherwise, it's pretty static. So you might, I might need a day to convert. That's fine. Those, but yes, we'll we'll get on that right no away. No problem. However, you think would you know best. Um, communicate what what we all saw, those of us who were able to participate uh, to the general public would be great. You got it. All right. Nice meeting everyone. We're going to stick okay. around just to kind of listen in. Okay. And I will put you back out in the audience. I think I uh, changed the role of attendee. Yes. Okay. What we have to do these days, Kathy. <laughs> no, I know. No, I know. No, no, I know. When, I, when you're promoted to host, you get this extra set of tasks, not yeah, necessarily, yeah. not necessarily with the training manual. So there. Yeah. Was. Thank you. Nice. Bye, everyone. <laughs> okay, and I see Margaret. I see Caroline is in the audience, so I'm going to bring her in. Just wait one second. Okay, I think I brought Caroline in. Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the website. Um, and this is very much, it's, it's ready to go as soon as we say it's ready to go, but we're, it's in the development phase. So this would be a good time as Margaret and Caroline go through. And I think Brianna is on with us also. Great, great. So to talk about anything you see missing, um, add, change. Um, and I think you told us a while ago, Margaret, that it's a pretty flexible platform. So this is not, once we've done it, it will always be exactly this way. So I'm turning it over to you. You need to unmute. What's going on here? Um, while Caroline's pulling that up, um, I want to just say, you know, I think what's really important to me right now is getting the kind of overall structure right. So it's going to work for us. So this version incorporates the comments that we heard from you a couple meetings ago. Um, it is 
also, I think, um, gonna, to me, the kind of landing page right now is the most important that people kind of land. So we'll look a little bit at this diagram, but Carolyn, why don't you walk us through what it looks like now? Can you kind of turn the pages, so to speak? Sure. This is the landing page. So obviously there's a scrolling marquee. We have the, just the one um, timeline image right now, which we have updated since yesterday. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, this, can we actually, Carolyn, can I just say a little bit about this? So because we haven't determined yet the, the overall timeline for getting to the local appropriation, this is a, intended to be very diagrammatic and just explain that there are two steps are done, which is the selection of the OPM and the designer. And there are three big steps related to the MSBA funding ahead of us. If, um, if you have this full size on your screen, you could sort of see a brief description between each. And then the diagram ends with the local vote. So we don't have dates for anything past the, the you are here line. But we will, in I would say within a month, we'll have more, more, a more defined timeline that will replace this document. So go ahead, Carolyn. Um, aside from that, this, there's a few links to background information on this uh, first page pertaining to the Wildwood School and the Fort River School, um, and as well as the MSBA process. Uh, and then we have um, an about the project page which has an overview of the project, which uh, Margaret had written up and just some images of the schools as they exist right now, but we can of course replace these with renderings, other diagrams as we would see fit in the future. Um, these are all links to the recordings of previous meetings. And at the bottom, there are uh, links to the committee website, meeting minutes page and the agendas. These can all be incorporated in here as individual links. We can shrink these down. However, we would like to see fit. These can be modified, but for now, um, all of these are, are links. They will open a new window when you select them. Key documents, we've uploaded links. These are just um, Adobe links uh, into Acrobat. So every one of these opens a new window to um, the documents, the key documents that are described on here. The FAQ page, we had discussed having individual uh, full, full pages available for key topics. So we'll, we will work on getting these available. Um, I'm working on creating a template for any potential um, just, just to be used for any potential documents in the future, but uh, so that there's a common look and feel. Um, but in the meantime, this is will be the kind of landing page for that. We can have an overview just with a short blurb for frequently asked questions, and then the, a link to each of the full documents can go straight from here. Uh, project team is just a list as at the moment we can include headshots or contact or however you guys would like to set this up. And then we have a get involved page and I think what we'd like to do is add a more of a description of how you can get involved here, some bullet points out. So that's kind of the overview. Margaret, did you want to go over anything else? So the, on this page, the Get Involved page, I thought um, someone, maybe as Sean at the last meeting, we looked at this, made the point that this would be a great place to list upcoming meetings. So if someone wanted to kind of easily see what's, what is sort of around the corner, um, this would be where we would enter those. So and as we start to get the building committee meetings dates established, for instance, going forward, we'll plug them in here, other public meetings, the joint meeting with the school committee that was just discussed, there would, you know, be things there with dates, and um, if available, you know, links on how to, how to join them, join those public meetings. But I think that was it in terms of what I wanted to add what, to what Caroline presented. So, um, and we sent you all, um, I sent you all a link to this page last night, and there is a comment in the very up hand, upper right hand corner. There's a 
uh, add comments button. It's, it's a really easy thing to use. So you can, if you have any comments, you can um, send them back to me. You can add the comment on here and, you know, we'll keep picking them up as we roll towards um, making it public. So right now this is still a private page. Well, um, any comments, questions um, as this moves before our eyes for people in the room? I'm, I'm not, Sean, yeah, raise your hands or just speak up because I'm not sure I can see all of you. And then Mike has his hand up too. I think the structure looks really good. I think it's set up in a way that we can build, build it out in the future. So from my perspective, it looks good. If there's a way, I don't think this is a huge deal, if there's a way to add maybe useful links or something on the sidebars here where there's a lot of open, um, at least on my screen because I have a wide monitor, there's a lot of space. Um, we might want to think about that. But in terms of the structure, I think it looks good. Mike? Yeah, we can certainly add a uh, sidebar. However you guys would like to set it up, it's really very easy functionality, so we can do that. Yeah, so um, I agree with what Sean said. Um, I think it looks great. Thank you for putting it together. I guess I had uh, one piece of feedback from the school committee uh, slash me, and then just a, a question, which is, um, you know, I think the school committee, much like this committee, is really eager to get this published. Um, so I think when it is published, if you could send, uh, if I could ask you to send over the, the public link to it, then I can get it out in my newsletter, we can get it on social media, I know the town would do the same. Uh, Brianna's on, she's expert at all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I do think it, it's good to have it out, but we want to push it out so that people start looking at it. Um, and I think that's, that's important. I think the only other question I had, which I know is addressed a little bit in the past, but just for everyone to be clear, when there are updates to be made, uh, like for instance, with you know this week and a press release and things like that, um, what's the way, what's the flow for committee members that they should, if, if they notice something, should they be emailing Kathy? Should they be emailing Margaret? Um, should be emailing me? Just so everyone knows if, if they notice something that perhaps um, is missing or needs to be added, how do they, how do they, uh, how do they do that? Well, I would suggest, Kathy, you can express your opinion about this. I would suggest that um, comments should come to me with a CC to Kathy or any other member of the committee who might sort of weigh in on the issue. Right. So, you know, for instance, there might be something um, that Rupert um, had a comment on that he would want to leave, loop you in or something you might have or Sean might have a comment that he wanted to loop Paul. in. I don't think we need to necessarily copy the whole committee, but I would say I'm the receiver of the information and Kathy's the arbiter of whether to go ahead and make the update as a proposal. That or works. Um, Jonathan. I'm already unmuted. I, I agree with all that's been said so far. I think it looks great. I'm, I'm just want to reiterate the, the eagerness to get it up now that we have a designer, you know, we have our full team in place um, and we're going to be moving forward at a rapid clip. So communication is key. Um, the one, one question I had and I thought about this morning, Margaret, is um, on the opening page, and this may be difficult to do to always keep it up to date. Can we have a box that says next meeting on and then, you know, like, um, yeah. and so right away that you don't have to go to a tab to see it on the get involved. So it would just be, we change that button each time we've set the next meeting. And then we could say for, for future meeting C and your, your link to your other tab. Yeah. Because we uh, we've got that on our website, and we have um, we have something that alerts people who have linked on to any of our committees, like this one, anytime we post a meeting. But for people who aren't on the regular alert system, they wouldn't see that, but they might pick it up here. So yeah, okay. How does everybody feel about the scrolling first page? I mean, right now we don't have things for scrolling through, but it won't be long. Like I would say by January, there will be, you know, ev events that have taken place, um, you know, that we can link to presentations we can link to. Do people think that this is going to be 
helpful or is it better to have you know a single set image and then people go to the pages Brianna Brianna and I thought Allison's hand was up too so either one of you reacting to that or Allison I know you have to leave so maybe um if you want to respond to that or something else so I um we, sure we I think I think scrolling images is fine. I, I mean, it gives some action to a website, which can sometimes be a little more engaging. Um, but my comment was more about um, I, I, it's a more of a personal kind of preference for how uh, unwieldy projects can kind of hide very important decisions within several links. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can try to highlight um, really important decisions and really important decisions that are impacting money so that it doesn't feel like it's trying to be buried, I think that would help uh, give forth a sense of transparency mm -hmm. um, so that people aren't feeling like they have to dig. Yeah. So how do we highlight really big decisions around design and money mm -hmm. so that people know we're being as transparent as possible, I think would be helpful. Yeah, Allison, I completely agree with you. I have done um, a very what's starting to be a very detailed look at the schedule um, that needs to kind of be embedded in the architect's contract and the overall timeline for the project. And so that will, and I think what needs to sort of point like important, like here, here, like these are the important points. Um, so I once we kind of get through this next piece of setting that schedule in place, I will bring back to you a draft of that that you can comment on, but I totally agree with you. And the, really this, this diagram is a placeholder just to tell get to help people get educated until we set the dates. Yeah, that timeline could almost be interactive. You know, so yes, it could. I agree. Looking at that top bar, mm -hmm. you're not sure where would I go, but that timeline is very clear. Like these are really important moments in what we're trying right. to do. And if you click, I mean, it would you wouldn't be able to make the scrolling then. Yeah. But this could be interactive. Where if I click on this, I will find everything related to that stage. If I click on this, I find everything yep. related to that stage, and that that might be a way there to help you. connect better too. Yep, I agree. Thank you, Brianna. You had your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to make a general comment based off of uh, Margaret's prompt um, with the scrolling if it's images I just I'm always looking towards accessibility so if they're image based with lots of text just being mindful if we can click that to to head to a PDF document that people can actually um, screen read or machine read would be um, appropriate in this, especially when there's that much information. Yeah. And then I'm just just gonna say that I'm here to um, answer any questions or show you about potential integrations of this site with the town of Amherst um, assets. So if you have a question about that, I'm here to speak to that as well. So Ellison, did you have another question? I'm just seeing your hand is up or comment, okay. Um, so the one I have, Brianna and Sean, we have something called Engage Amherst, which is a way of getting comments back. Do you think we should build that capacity into this website rather than having people have to go to another place to do that? So they, they get involved. I don't know whether there's how interactive they can be, but as we get to a point where a meeting's coming up, you miss the meeting, but you wanna send a comment, um, you, you looked at the materials. So how can we make sure that you don't feel like, oh, there was a 9 a.m. meeting, I couldn't go to that one, but I do have something to say, and Brianna? So that was one of the things I was going to speak to was potential um, crossover to our Engage platform. So at the very basic level, when this site is live, I can have this live as a, initiative on our Engage Amherst page, um, where we will see that there's an opportunity to learn more about the school project. It'll live on our page. When they click it, it'll, people will come to this page that you're seeing. That's at the very basic level. Um, we can also integrate con consultation tools from Engage and embed them on this site, which is a little bit more advanced, but we can certainly do that um, if that's the preferred method of submitting comments or um, answering a survey, it can run through Engage. If this group would like that, it's a possibility. 
but at the very least, we can have a, a very prominent tile um, on our homepage, which I have keyed, keyed up to show you, as well as our Engage Amherst page, since people will be going there organically to look at other projects so we can link to, to this project as well. So, and, and I'll just echo really quick what Brianna said. I've used the, Brianna showed, set up the Engage page for a few different projects for me, um, and it works really well at that two-way communication. So again, I think it's, this committee has decided what it wants to do with it, um, but it is a really nice um, way to engage the public. So I think we should explore how we can utilize it um, when we get to that stage. And the good thing about that tool, building off what Sean said, some of the consultation tools within Get and Engage, we can take and almost make it feel like it's coming from your site, but it's really coming from Engage Amherst. So we get some good crossover um, as well. So with, with, with the comments you got today um, in terms of timing and updating it to put Donesco in, in the press release, um, mm -hmm. you know, wherever, wherever we're doing press release, are you going to be ready to launch today's Thursday? Do you have a date when this will be up? Um, well, as I suggested at the last meeting, I, I would be reluctant to um, put this up until we've con concluded, at least conceptually, the um, fee negotiation with Denisco. Um, but I think once we have a handshake agreement about that, then, you know, I would be comfortable. And I'd like to think that will happen before Thanksgiving. Okay. And then if um, we'll, we'll move on to the, we talked about future dates. So does it, Mike's proposal to meet jointly with a school committee, we wouldn't meet clearly, we wouldn't meet that week also as a building committee meet, meeting. Right. Does that work for members of this committee to be attending a Tuesday, 6.30 at night, rather than a Thursday, eight in the morning meeting um, and have, Denisco, and that would be Denisco coming to us, I think, with a, what are the big milestones interacting with us? And we'd have something to put up on our site about that meeting. Exactly. That so does that work? I'll just look around to faces. Will that work to shift to that? And I see, oh, Tamara has joined us. Um, Tam Tamara Sullivan Daly is on. So um, uh, we're glad to have you. Um, so does anyone, does that work for everyone? And if it, you can tell me later. And we can then, if if it works and we have a forum, then we'll declare it as a joint meeting. Um, okay, and we'll, we'll just figure out how we do that, um, the mechanisms of that. Okay, that's great. It works, it certainly works for me. Um, uh, and I'm glad Allison and, and everyone brought it up. Jonathan. Oh, I'm, I'm muted, okay, good. Uh, yeah, I, have, I don't have a problem, absolutely don't have a problem doing the joint meeting. We should probably talk about what the agenda of that meeting is, because we may need or may not need to have our own meeting in close proximity to that to do kind of our our, our work as a committee. Um, so what I was saying- not necessarily doing our, all of our work with the school committee per se. So Jonathan, what I was thinking is December 2nd, which would be a, a Thursday, we would have, it would be that, you know, and we could have, assuming that the Donesco contract is signed, they could join us, we could be talking about timelines, miles, you know, that would be agenda, which just us. Okay. And, and yeah. Yeah. Does, does that work? You know, and we try to not have them be exactly the same, but, you know, do that initial um, and yeah. push. And I think that the agenda for that meeting, the very first thing we should be talking about is community engagement as it relates to schedule. That that to me is that. like the could be the entire agenda for the meeting. <laughs> so because yeah. I think once once you agree about it, your approach to community agenda, the other things kind of kind of lay out from there, but you can't kind of back into that piece of it. And if I could add one last thing before I, I uh, let, go, let go of asking questions, um, I think it would be good at that joint meeting to, to, for the public's benefit, kind of clarify the different roles our committee plays versus the school committee's role. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and maybe even touch a little bit on the town's role too, because they yeah. are different roles. There are certain things 
there's certain information we will receive as this committee that we will work with that will be handed to us by other groups and, and mm -hmm. clarifying what those roles are and how that works, I think would be important. That would be great because the council is going to have that question also, Jonathan, you know, as, as another body on uh, when do we hear what, are we part of what group? Phoebe. Um, I was just going to say um, also on top of that, I'd like to really have, I know Kathy, you and I talked a little bit or tried to about um, not just sort of the delineation of roles, but also how things that ultimately the school committee themselves gets to decide on or, or Mike gets to put in place, how it ultimately affects us and, and, and the decisions that we have to make. So things like the ed plan and you know how other buildings in this town will be affected by uh, you know, other school buildings, i.e. Crocker, that kind of stuff will be affected by this new school. And, and those are not decisions that we deal with but they are decisions that have an impact on design of the new school, on all of those things that, you know, is sort of uh, more our purview. Um, and that's that for me personally is sort of a missing piece here. Um, so I'm excited to meet with them and kind of get an idea about those things. That's great. Can I jump in here, Kathy? Yes, absolutely, Paul. So I, just, I agree with what Phoebe said and what Jonathan said about the purpose of the December 14th meeting. I think we should use that as our sort of target public launch and engagement with the community. If the school committee will give us the time to really present the, the, the uh, designers, uh, present us and all that stuff. So we use that as a major sort of launch point. Um, point two is, um, yes, I, I agree in trying to get the fees uh, uh, Negotiated before Thanksgiving. That's my mission, and we'll we'll work with with uh, Cancer and with um, Dinesco to make that happen. That would be a, a major goal. And I was wondering, the question I have for the website is whether that is a um, it's realistic to say that we'll have that up and running before Thanksgiving as well. Um, I tried to make some comments using the tool last night. I'm not sure if I did it right, but um, so to Carolyn and Margaret, do you think that's reasonable to say, and to, and to Brianna actually, um, you know, is it reasonable to say, well, we can get the website up and running um, by next, by like, before Thanksgiving, and that I think we should actually use Engage Hammers, you know, all tools available we should be using to engage the public. Um, I'm going to defer to Caroline because she's the one who has to do the work. Caroline, I think we have a couple of tweaks here. Do you feel comfortable that we could, uh, separating it from the other issue about um, settling the contract with Danisco, do you feel like you we could put it up um, on the 23rd, for instance? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a, it, all we need to do is plug in the domain and, and mm -hmm. launch it. So, I mean, it's really simple to officially release it to the wild, if you will, but Great. Um, it, yeah, I don't see why we couldn't do that. Brianna? And, and on the town side, once we have that live public link, it's a little uh, work to integrate it in the places that I'm thinking of, but it, I can meet that timeline definitely once we have that live link. Well, this is exciting. <laughs> It's it, it also feels like the project is live then rather than we're we're waiting for um, paperwork. Uh, so any other comments on the website and, and the link that Margaret provided us, um, people should, if you need it again, just you've all got Margaret's email, let her know so that if other things occur to you, since there are a few more days before this goes live and it's flexible. So it won't be forever as we've just seen it. Um, one, one other, sorry, I'm, there's sure. this moment in the morning when the sun hits my face and I'm either in the dark or I can't see. Um, the, um, I, I think uh, looking at it this morning with you all, my reflection is that we need to have something that is fixed at the top of the page or the, maybe at the bottom of the page 
that's the schedule and then have the scrolling thing as well. Um, I, I don't think it's going to work to have, I don't think, I don't think we can turn off the scroll, but so we'll put, pull it, take the schedule and pull it out and maybe just have it at the top and the scrolly thing below it once the schedule gets settled. So, you know, um, Phoebe and Allison, I think to your points that, you know, we want, you want to be able to sort of transparently see easily uh, where, where you are and what these milestones mean. So that I think should be fixed and not moving, so. Okay, so I think, um, I'm not seeing any other hands or comments. I think that we have discussed the website. So the one other item on today's agenda was people's ideas um, recommendations, thoughts about, we, we talked about, um, I don't even know what the right name for it, but a working group that would help us with outreach that might be people that come in and out. And Margaret's got this uh, timeline that once we work with Donesco would show what weeks are we doing big public meetings, outreach. So we're doing meetings at schools, we're doing information sessions, but do we want, you know, where are we engaging teachers? And Paul has pointed out, if we set it up officially, it has to be an official group. Um, and then it has to have meet, public meetings. So any thoughts about sort of a liaison group? Phoebe, you were one of the people who raised this initially. Um, we've got people on the school committee, in addition to Ben, who want to be active on this. Um, so this is just a time for brainstorming. It's not decision of ideas on what might be useful to us. You know, there are, when Steve goes off the committee, as he, he told Denisco, he, he said he's going to be happy to come back in at the point where, you know, looking at architectural drawings or looking at some decisions between this or that. Um, and there, we've got clearly other people in our community who will architects, civil engineers, but there's teachers and parents and kids. So any thoughts that anyone has um, toward this end? And, you know, if not, we, we can continue when we, when Donesco comes in, we can seek out their ideas on what's worked well in other, com in other communities to, you know, the, the goal is well before we make any decisions um, that everyone knows this is coming up, where to get information, and they can comment, um, attend a meeting, ask questions, uh, so that no, nothing, no one is taken by surprise that, oh, they're about to go in this direction or that direction. So I have a question, Kathy, about that. Um, you... Uh said, you know, if it's uh, official, then it's, you know, uh, an official committee or whatever and hold public meetings and all of that. Um, I guess my question um, is, how do we ensure that all of the outreach need, that, that really needs to happen, especially given our town, happens um, if it's uh, you know, if it's not official, I guess, like, what are, what are our options there? Um, how do we ensure that we can reach the most amount of people? Um, and, uh, you know, get the information out and, and not just get the information out, but get the feedback in that we need to get from people to answer questions that people are inevitably going to have. Yeah, I, I think it's a good question. Um, you know, it, this we just started having some discussions, and Mike, you can talk a little bit about what you did with the listening sessions um, early on. But the um, the council um, president has said we could do, should we, could we, you know, have facilitated announce there's going to be a meeting at these places, but a repeat meeting. So if you can't go this day, you can go during a week. Um, and some of it could be by Zoom, and all of it is to bring people in. Uh, do we take anything out to the community if there's a large group of parents and kids in a particular place? We have district council meetings, and we thought 
we could coordinate the, the time period where we really want to get information and get information pulled in and out that we could all do a district meeting and that divides up Amherst into areas um, and really announce it and have someone come in and do a presentation. You know, like what is, so it wouldn't be that all the counselors have to, so just trying to think of what are the different avenues that we have besides Zoom, Facebook, media, you know, social media to have people feel there's an opportunity. This is the way I could come in um, where I'm not going to follow every single piece of it, but I want to be part of this piece. So I see Steve's hand is up and this is really, uh, you know, all hands on deck with ideas right now. It's not to make a decision on how one way to do it. I think we're going to try to think of multiple. Steve? Yeah, so I, the answer is I, I don't have, a, I really don't know. So the council meetings have, have limited success depending on which district you're in. And I think that the, you would find a lot of districts complaining that, you know, it's the same 50 people attending the council meetings. I think one of the effective models actually in the, as the change of government happened were, were the neighborhood associations. So for example, your neighborhood District One has a very active neighborhood association, as do others. So the nice thing about that type of model is that that is outside of government, right? So they can they can operate however they feel fit. And from what I followed with don't you know District One neighborhood association, it's that they were actually quite effective, um, you know, advocates for very various issues that got very involved in the library and things, you know, the, the uh, North Amherst library, you know, things like that. So that would be a model is through sort of a non-government, um, you know, outreach groups so that they're not, that they can operate more freely. So to the extent we have them, I, I guess that's a way of saying that the North Amherst group is, is as, as Steve said, it's it's a loosely knit group. But for example, when the listening sessions for the school were going on, Mike uh, Carrie, Carrie came to us from the school committee to say, "Here's when they're going to happen. Here's what we're going to be talking about." And the the community group, we filled a room with people who were asking questions. So, and some of those then came to the official meeting. You know, but it was a good way of. In, in your neighborhood, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was the lovely pre COVID days, which made things a wee bit right, easier. Right. Um, we, yeah, we was at the survival center where we yeah. there, there, it was standing room only, exactly. Right. Um, but, but I do think the larger point's a good one. I appreciate Phoebe bringing it up. You know, my perspective is um, people appreciate sharing information when we have information. Uh, when we've run, public sessions that didn't have clear, um, actionable uh, things to talk about. It, it feels like you brought me here and you're telling me, oh yeah, we don't know anything. Here's our, you know, we have architects, great, but you, you know, why would I come to a meeting about that? So I do think perhaps at our next meeting, um, whether it's a subcommittee or, you know, as you said, you know, that conversation, um, it'd be really important for me, not just for Margaret, but for Denisco to be on board, because I do think when we say even their initial schemes on the site, they may not want to do that because they were initial, but like, here's kind of like our initial read on this. What do you all think, right? That's where there's two-way dialogue. And, and when you call it a forum, you don't actually have enough information to get feedback. Um, it actually sets up a really negative dynamic of why did you drag me away from whatever it is, kids, family, TV. Right. Netflix, whatever, um, and uh, to a meeting to tell me that you, you're you working on something. So I think it's that balance of not waiting too long to engage, but not going so far ahead of where we are that uh, we engage people on things that we can. I mean, it's, it's very similar to like even the, the sixth grade question, which is sort of relevant, uh, which is, you know, I'm working with a group of staff members to come up with what are these kind of like decision points we have about the model and um world language and stuff so that when we get feedback we're getting feedback on things that are real not just what do you think about things it's like here's an initial look you know what do you think where, where there's it, the feedback can be targeted to things you know as as, as we talked about before what, that are actually happening 
So I think Danisco will be huge partners out with us on this. Not that they need to go to every engagement, but they may be able to help us with Margaret think about, okay, well, here's a rough timeline. Here's where we're gonna be looking at sites. Here's where we're gonna be looking at initial building design. Here's where we're gonna be looking at ad reno versus building new. And then at least we could plan out these forms and map them out when there's actual things to get feedback on, data to share, information to share. They could have their you know, report from, you know, here's the wetness on both sites and here's the space on both sites and here's the parking on both sites. And that's where I think the engagement can be at its highest because I think you plan engagement and you don't have something for people to engage on. Um, it can feel really um, unsatisfying and that's the opposite of what we want. So I'm just glad that Phoebe raised this and we're talking about it, so thank you. Uh, uh, Jonathan's hand is up, then Phoebe, then Ben. Yeah, I, I would I would uh, concur with Mike on, on the topic of when you bring lots of people together, you wanna make sure that there's there's actionable things and, and um, there's an actual focus. It isn't just kind of a continuation of what we do. Um, many people, who want to be very engaged will watch this group um, uh, and but there's other people who, who don't have the opportunity to do that uh, and we want to be able to to focus those folks uh, when there's really something we want reaction to or impact from um, the the other thing that I agree wholeheartedly with is we need to have Denisco uh, you know as, as part of this they, they have been doing this during COVID. Um, I find the, the whole doing this during COVID very daunting um, because most of this, when I have personally been involved with this sort of thing, it's, it's all been pre-COVID. Um, and I, I, there's something really dynamic and I think uh, very helpful when you actually can have people <laughs> in a place. I find these trying to get feedback in these kind of settings um, still very, uh, you know, I don't want to say artificial, but but limiting, I'm not. I, I worry that you're not hearing all voices on a Zoom yeah. call, um, and I, I just would really love to have a, a real public forum. And I don't know how you do that. I mean, I, we can't even go inside our kids' schools yet, so um, I, I, I find that challenge very daunting. And would love to have, uh, you know, obviously Margaret's uh, uh, input on that as well. But I'm sure Denisco has done it a dozen times in the last year and a half. Maybe we could have 70 degree weather in January and February, right? So we could be outside. <laughs> no, it's a positive side to global warming on it. <laughs> <laughs> so Phoebe. Um, I I totally agree that having um information to share is always better uh uh in terms of getting feedback and having those conversations. My my only concern is I am not actually um <laughs> I'm I'm not 100% sure that everybody even knows that that this is happening again, um, and that's a concern for me um, because we we have to engage this town. We have to get people's opinions. We have to let people know that this is coming down the pipeline. Um, I, I don't think it's appropriate to wait until we have you know, everything in a, a complete timeline with everything in line to say, okay, guess what? We have this decided and that decided and this decided and here we go. And then have people go, wait, what? <laughs> you, you have all these decisions made and we didn't even know this was going on. So I think that there, I, I think we have to, yes, I agree with that piece um, of what, what you're saying. And there, we really need to do some kind of outreach to say, this is here again. This is here. We're doing this. We're talking about it. We want to share this with people because there's going to be important milestones that we're going to need to talk about. And we need the most town engagement possible. And that means not just talking to all of the people that are going to show up because they always show up. <laughs> but we need the we need the people who don't who don't show up who don't know they can show up those are the people that we need to know that this is coming down the pipeline so that's it thanks ben 
Yeah, Phoebe actually kind of tackled a lot of what I was going to say, because yeah, I'm, I'm hearing us talk about neighborhood associations. That's awesome. District meetings. Nobody in my neighborhood. We don't have an association. Nobody in my neighborhood goes to these district meetings. So I think we need to have like aggressive, active outreach when it comes to this. Right. And, and, and she's dead on hitting it early to get it on people's radars is very important. Like, like I, I mentioned this when, when I was out, you know, canvassing for my other job there and uh like she said, not a lot of people know that we're in the process of, of going about starting a new building project here. So, so yeah, I just, I just want to keep that in our, in the forefront that there are people, the outliers are the ones that we're going to have to most actively reach. Other people are looking for this information. Margaret. So I want to, I want to mention two things. One of them, one of them, I think I've mentioned before and, and I'm putting it out there. I haven't had a chance to discuss this with Denisco and you know, they're, they're very experienced with community engagement. So they may have a different take on it. But in, in my experience, I feel like one of the general problems with community engagement is it tends to feel very scattershot. Like there's a meeting here and there's a meeting there. And, and, and you can't, people I think who aren't really plugged in can't capture the thread. I bet they can't see the pattern to it. And so um, I'm very interested. And there's also this issue of like, who gets which information first and how that feels. Um, so I am interested in at least discussing something where we actually identify weeks. We identify like a set of actions that need to happen. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. A set of actions that need to happen, like st clear steps, and then have a week that is devoted to each of them. And in that week, there is not a school building committee meeting, but the town council gets an update. The school, can build, the school committee gets an update. There are meetings in the schools. There are other events that it's sort of so that people kind of that so that it becomes hard if you're in the community to not have passed by something that marks that moment so you know and I think everything I agree with everything that's being said about you know it being multivalent in terms of what it looks like but I think that approach um, where it's clear like this is the week that this is being discussed and this is the week that's being discussed would help the other thing I would say is to me, and you, you can spread this out into bigger steps. There are really four steps here. The first step is what I would call listening and reminding. So, you know, Phoebe, to your point, like that's the point where you say, hey, everybody, try to get everybody's attention. Hey, this is happening. And then the second, and as part of that listening step, it's also, we want to identify the priorities for the project. Not everybody's priorities are gonna be the same, but you do wanna take in people's ideas about what priority, you know, you know, for instance, like provide a set of priorities and say, here are some things which might be priorities. What do you think about them? What's missing? How would you rank them? We know that everybody won't rank them the same, but can, can we agree on a common set of priorities against which options should be evaluated? So that's the, that's the first step. The second step is what are the options? So then there's another week, if you will, where you, the, the design team brings forward a set of options. And we say, this is, this is what we think is the range. What, is there, are there any missing? How do these sort of match up with your priorities, right? So that's a week. Then there's a third week which is um, preventing, presenting then an, an analysis where you say, we've, we've heard your thoughts about the priorities. Here's what the building committee thinks is the priorities, having heard from you before. Here's how these options rate relative to the priorities that have been identified, comment. And then the fourth step is, okay, we showed you the options. We, we took in your comments. We've looked at the priorities. The, now the school building committee is bringing forward a preferred option that builds on of those steps. So I think that isn't to say there, that that process might, it, any one step might be like more than one week, but if I had to reduce it down to one thing, 
you know, those are the four steps I would do and that's how I would go about it. So again, you know, I haven't, this is, this is me, this is not the committee, this is not Denisco. It's just, I think if somebody put me in charge of the process and said, how would you do it? That's Margaret's version. Sean. Yeah, I just wanted to um, raise, there's just a few non-meeting tools that we have around pushing out information. Um, that are that sort of came out of COVID, um, and Brianna will appreciate this. Um, we have a couple new signage opportunities where we can post information, both the SUFA signs downtown, um, and then we have other digital road signs now that we can place where we want, again, just to create that awareness that this is happening again. Um, nice. And then the other thing that's very new that has, you know, I have to talk to Paul how this would look, and, and it's something we would want to explore further with this group. Um, we're using our ARPA our American Rescue Plan money is to fund an ambassador program or to continue funding an ambassador program. And one of the things we hope to do with that going forward is to expand that ambassador program out into the community and particularly um, underrepresented communities or communities that maybe don't participate in things like this meeting or council meetings. Um, and that would be another tool to get, you know, they could go out and share information and get feedback and just, again, create that awareness that we're looking to create um, as broadly as possible. That's great. Tamara. Welcome. You have to unmute. Hey, thank you. Sorry I was late. I promised one of my buses that if they all remain seated, I would ride it this morning, not thinking that they would do it, but they did. So yay them. Sorry, that's why I was late. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm new to this. So, you know, please forgive me if I'm reiterating anything or something's already been addressed. And so for me in listening to where since I've been able to get logged in, I think a lot about equity and opportunity as it relates to a lot of the families. And one of the things that Julio and I are actually starting today is a family community meetup where on consecutive Thursdays, we're gonna be going to Mill Valley or Colonial Village or Rolling Green or here so that all families have an opportunity to come meet with us. Um, and we're gonna be asking questions of them in terms of like, how are things going? What's, um, you know, how's education going? Whatever. Um, but I see this also as an opportunity to begin to, as I'm connecting with families and community, to also use this as an opportunity to then share out information in a way that feels comfortable to those families, um, Sean, that you were talking about that might not necessarily feel part of a group, right? Or necessarily take part in or see themselves um, in uh having a place at the table, so to speak. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm thinking more like print materials in late different languages. And, you know, I don't know what the timeline is for any of that, but I'm just like throwing out this idea and hopefully we'll be able to work in conjunction to, to see how this can happen. So more people have opportunity and there's more equity for sharing information. Sorry. That's great. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be offering here, but uh, we're one of the only three cities and towns in Massachusetts that has an architecture school in our midst. And so it's very possible that our Department of Architecture and or our Department of Landscape Architecture Planning could somehow be involved in this public process. And, and um, we actually did this with a library, with the Jones Library, that we took that on as, you know, four years ago, took that on as a design problem, sort of looking at what the issues were with adding on to and, you know, add rent of all the things that Mike was saying, you know, renovation, add renovation. And our students took that on. So we had 30 minds looking at that. And we had various presentations that were open to the public in our, you know, our, our beautiful new design building. But it's very possible that something like that could be helpful in this process that if our students, so students do the craziest things, right? So who doesn't love, you know, student, young student architects trying to figure out how to, you know, address a complex problem. But that might be some way of, you know, getting people involved in the conversation. So when we did these student presentations for the library, 
we had lots of people from the public. We had the trustees, but we had lots of people that had been following that process, you know, um, and they were welcome to ask questions, be involved. The other thing is that we could hold charrettes. So we have, um, you know, the ability to do that in our building also. We have a great space for that. And then finally, we also have um, some of my colleagues also have degrees or, or earning degrees in the College of Education. So they, you know, they basically have credibility in that area also. So it could be a project that we worked on with College of Ed. So I, don't, I wouldn't want to do anything that would complicate them, you, you know, the, the discussion, but it could definitely be something that could help free up the discussion. And so it's sort of happening there rather than, you know, at UMass rather than, you, you know, in some town arena. Would, for Charette, Steve, would the School of Architecture space be available to Danisco if they wanted to use it? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we could definitely make that happen. So really when we got, when we lobbied for our building and where it is, so it's in the very public part of the UMass campus, right at the south entrance to the campus. R really the argument we made is that this gives us the ability to engage in community issues, either for the town of Amherst or for, you know, for the region, Pioneer Valley. And it's a very accessible, there's bus stops, there's, um, you know, parking all around. It's, you know, very close to town for actually, but yeah, absolutely. So I'm seeing- can I, can I just chime in and say, for those of you who aren't familiar with the word charrette, it's a French word with a very interesting history, but what it's, what is being described as a kind of active workshop where a group of people come together and focus on resolving a design problem. And it has sort of has a limited time frame, and you set the problem at the beginning, and then you know jointly look at at the outcomes at the end. So, and if I may, we've done so. The particularly the planning department in the town of Amherst has done. You know, if you've been around, they've done charrettes for say the North Amherst um, Library area, um, various projects throughout the years. This is, this is great. I have a long list of ideas that have been generated. And, and I'm also wondering, and Paul will likely, Paul or Sean, who has the money in town, you know, we don't often do mass mailings to every house, but if we had some, uh, some clear piece of paper, um, Tamara was saying, if we had a brochure to hand out, we, we could at least let everyone know what's happening, you know, once we're clear on what, what the, you know, the, um, the hope for timeline would be, you know, that the school discussion is now live. So we, we just think of a way that it would be hard not to know what's happening, but you might not know where every meeting is, but at least you would know where this is now, we're, we're live with the school project. Um, Margaret, is your hand up again, or is that just not down from before? That is not down from before. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, I if there are there any other comments on a, a pretty amazing morning uh, and the range of things we've been talking about? Because uh, if not, I want to make sure we have time for public comments, and we do have uh, attendees, and I see at least one of their hands is up. Um, is that all right with everyone for, for me to turn to public comments? Okay, so Bruce. Um, Bruce, I am allowing you to talk. You just have to unmute. Um, I think I did. Can you hear you me? Did. Yep, you're on. Um, well, I, I want to make a comment on the uh, design team selection. Um, I was... Uh, I listened to all three of the interviews and stayed for the uh, evaluation and it was a very robust process and uh, essentially I'm uh, uh, pleased with the choice, but except in one respect, and I think it's a pretty important respect. Um, it's in the context of our net zero uh, bylaw. Uh, this building is going to be the, the essentially the first cab off the rank in compliance with the town's new uh, 
net zero energy bylaw. And, and I really hope that this project can achieve compliance with that bylaw simply, elegantly, without complication and without controversy, because that would dignify this bylaw. And, and if, if it was done in a kind of a messy way or what it was arguably not fulfilled, um, I think it uh, could compromise that uh, bylaw for future projects. So I think it's really important. And with that objective in mind, I have to say that I felt a lot more confident with the mechanical engineering uh, consultants, the systems consultants with the other two finalists. Um, that, uh, as I said, I, I think the design intelligence of the other two uh, uh, systems consultants, uh, engineering consultants was uh, noticeably uh, superior. Um, and take a very particular example. Um, it's, it's, it's one of a number, but um, the uh, presentation that, uh, that NISCO's uh, engineering consultants made vis-a-vis -vis daylighting, for example, included uh, 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 in a, a short list of uh, uh, st strategic options, uh, they included light shelves. Now, I think most people who are familiar with daylighting strategies uh, in the Northeast where slightly over 50% of our daylight hours are overcast, uh, we know that light shelves are actually counterproductive. They lower the light the, the, during the overcast conditions and they don't uh, in, in elevate it. So the inclusion of that in a, in a list of strategies um, was um, uh, kind of not at all confidence building. Um, um, uh, so that's that's just a particular example. Now, by contrast, the woman Julie from Bureau Happold was just a, extraordinarily uh, com uh, 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 confidence building in all of her responses um, to uh, the challenge of delivering net zero, um, and as was um, the, uh, the 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 people from Chris Schaffner's. Uh, group, the Green Engineer, and particularly I thought it was uh, instructive, and Rupert, you might want to bear this in mind, I think, their strategy uh, to achieving things and reducing complexity was to um, specify uh, all of the systems to come, the, that's to say the, the, the proprietary systems, to come without the control uh, systems embedded, and then they had a separate uh, single uh, control contractor that did the control uh, specifications and, and, and uh, sorry, uh, installations for all of them so that you got a, a single reliably integrated um, functional buildings set of systems. And I thought, yes, uh, that sounds like a really intelligent strategy. And, and um, so I, I had a great deal of confidence in those other two and Thornton and Tomasetti by contrast, uh, not so much. I think that Thornton Tomasetti are capable of doing a good job. It's just that the people that we're uh, preparing on the screen, hopefully, are, are not representative um, of, the, of, of the best that that firm can offer. So um, to conclude, therefore, I would uh, encourage stress um, uh, very strongly um, that when you are negotiating with NISCO, make sure, do your best to let them know that some people at least are not at all confident in their choice and make sure that their A team is delivered to this project and not their B or C team. My sense is that we had the B team uh, talking to us uh, on uh, Tuesday morning and I would like them to deliver the A team to this project and uh, that's enough for me. Uh, I, I, there was I, plenty more I could say about this, but that was a, a huge um, uh, reservation that I had in the selection. And it links to the, what I believe is a very important uh, 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 imperative for this town that we not only deliver this building 
um, handsomely as a project. And we certainly have to do that having failed once before. And Kathy was very clear about that during the, uh, the interviews. But we also have this other requirement, which is to really make sure that our zero net energy bylaw is not compromised by a half-hearted uh, and arguably incomplete uh, compliance. So please, let's get uh, Thomas Eddy's A-team on this project so that we've got the best chance of achieving that. Thank you, Bruce. From me. Um, any other public comments? I don't see any other hands and I have to figure out how to uh, mute. Okay. So I, the, the, the other agenda item that we had was to discuss future meeting dates. Um, and for right now, I think what we're looking at is a December 2nd um, and it will be our normal meeting time of eight in the morning. Um, I do. Uh, I did hear from Allison that this time is a difficult one for her. So just in terms of classes and other things going on, but I think we need to keep that for now, unless anyone disagrees. And then we're talking about December fourteenth, an evening meeting with the school committee. So those will be. I don't think we'll be meeting any more than that in this year, the calendar year. So. Um, is, is everyone fine with those two as the targets? And Den yes, and Daniska will be part of the second when we're, we're talking about some of these, who's doing what timelines and getting ready for the larger public presentation um, launch of the project. Mike, I'm, I'm just looking at your face. Did, any thoughts on any of this? I. Uh, uh I have nothing else to add to what you said. I think that's okay. I'm with you. Okay, then I then I think um, Jonathan. Sorry. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to say if 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 we have Denisco under contract by the time of our meeting, it might be nice to have a, a conversation with them. You know, invite them to our con you know our meeting, but um, I don't know if that'll happen. Oh yeah. But that yeah. I think that's the plan, Jonathan, that the December okay. yeah. 2nd, that was the purpose of December 2nd in my mind was to have them there meeting have them at the meeting. Yeah, definitely. And and have it be very interactive. I mean, I don't want to have them redo the whole presentation they did to us, but do a much more focused. Here's your team. Um, you know, yeah, I want to look ahead. <laughs> yeah. And and how are we how are we going to proceed? You know, um, they did, they they once we will send you all the, um, uh, you heard uh, that they will get us their presentation, all, all the teams, because one of the interview questions was, um, if you have to build on our site, and we have to, you know, whether it's ad reno or new, how would you do phasing, how would you approach it, so they all did diagrams for us with which took in Wildwood and Fort River as the two sites and what we have to work with. And then they also talked about education plans. So to have them have a really focused discussion on how they see this proceeding. Um, so that, you know, that is, you know, if, if we haven't had it negotiated by now, then um, A, that would be too bad. But B, I don't think we have enough meat for December, uh, enough uh, uh, top, topics to discuss on December 2nd. That's the purpose of that meeting. Okay, I, I think we are done then. Um, thank you all. Um, um, and for me, as I said, it was an extremely difficult decision um, when we were doing this. And uh, you can hear from the public comments, pluses and minuses in terms of what we heard. Um, and we're, but we are ready to move forward. Thank you very much and see you in, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Right. That is, we're at the end of November. So happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you in a few weeks. Bye. Gobble, we gobble. Done. We're adjourned. <laughs>